Good afternoon, everyone. It is right at 2 p.m. and we want to jump right in today. So thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited to be here and share more about Wisconsin's Harvest of the Month campaign with you. My name is Emily Latham and I am the Health Communications Outreach Specialist with the UW-Madison Division of Extension. And I am joined today by three incredible presenters. April Yancer is the Farm to School and Institution and Wisconsin Foods Program Specialist with the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection. Maggie Byrne is a Public Health Nutritionist with the School Nutrition Team at the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. And Sarah Smith is the Policy Systems and Environment Specialist with FoodWise, also here at UW-Madison Division of Extension. Today we have a packed agenda for you, starting with an overview of Harvest of the Month and related materials. Maggie will discuss crediting and menu planning in school nutrition programs. Then April will share about supplying for Harvest of the Month and DATCAP's minimally processed farm to school veggie pilot project. And finally, Sarah will make connections to how extension can help support a healthy food environment in schools. We will save time at the end for an open Q&A where you are more than encouraged to unmute yourself and ask questions of any of the presenters here today. But during the presentations, we ask that you please add your questions to the chat box and we'll address them as soon as possible. So before we dive into Harvest of the Month, I wanna launch a poll so we have a better understanding of who is joining us today. Let me get that launched. So you should see a poll on your screen. And we have people already putting in options, that's awesome. So select the option that best describes your role. I work for a school district. I am a producer, supplier, or distributor. I work with extension. I work with a different organization that supports farm to school or other. Give it just another second. Looks like 90% of people have voted. Awesome, let me go ahead and share those results. So it looks like quite a few of the join, people joining today work with Extension. It's amazing. Hi, everyone. We have about 20% that work for a school district, 20% working with a different organization that supports farm to school, and about 6% other. Well, I'm super excited that we have a mix of people joining today because it really highlights how we may all be approaching harvest of the month through different ways, but we're really all here and all connected through farm to school. And some key elements of farm to school are engaging with procurement of Wisconsin foods, nutrition and agriculture education, and school garden development. And really all of these pieces come together in harvest of the month. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, I work with the UW-Madison Division of Extension Institute of Health and Wellbeing. And we have two primary program areas within our institute that engage in local Harvest of the Month efforts. So we have a Healthy Eating Active Living program, and we have a FoodWise program, which is federally funded by the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program Education, or SNAPED, and the Expanded Food and Nutrition Education Program, or FNEP. And both of these programs focus on advancing healthy eating habits, active lifestyles, and healthy community environments for people throughout Wisconsin. And that also ties in really well with Harvest of the Month. So what is Harvest of the Month? For those of you who may be new to Harvest of the Month, it's a statewide campaign that empowers students to eat more fruits and veggies. Each month, schools showcase one seasonal, Wisconsin grown fruit or vegetable and encourage students to learn about the importance of eating fruits and veggies. Our primary implementation setting is elementary schools, but this campaign is really adaptable to middle school, high school, early care and education, and even food retail and food pantries. And we do have plans within FoodWise to keep expanding the program to new settings and new audiences in the coming years. Harvest of the Month is also an evidence-based campaign, and some of the benefits include 
encouraging students to try new fruits and veggies, increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables students eat, reducing food waste, growing school meal participation, and supporting Wisconsin farmers and the local economy. Now, when thinking about implementing Harvest of the Month in schools, I like to break it down into three subsettings: the cafeteria, classrooms or gardens or after school, those learning environments, and the home. And the core of Harvest of the Month is really in the cafeteria or school meal program. And ideally, each month, schools will serve the featured fruit or veggie in at least one meal or snack, lead a taste test, and display promotional materials. In the classroom, teachers, AmeriCorps members, FoodWise educators can engage students in taste testing or educational activities about the featured fruit or vegetable, really to increase knowledge and intention to eat more fruits and veggies. And then finally, there are parent or caregiver components to support healthy eating in the home. And really it's these three different settings, reaching students in different settings and in different ways that work together to create the combined effect of Harvest of the Month. And schools can share information about Harvest of the Month and healthy eating with families through school newsletters, social media, and postcards sent home with the students. We just finished material development for our full suite of promotional materials featuring 20 different fruits and veggies. And the way we've divided up the produce for harvest of the month is by season. And this really encourages purchasing of local products from local farmers or through distributors. But we've also recognized that schools need flexibility in order to be able to serve fruits and veggies when it makes sense on their menus and when they can you know, access the fruits and veggies. So none of the materials are branded with months or seasons to allow schools to have the flexibility on when they are able to feature each fruit or veggie. So for example, many of the winter crops could also be featured in the fall, and there may also be frozen options that could be featured in the winter. Before I dive into an overview of Harvest of the Month and all of the materials that we have available, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the process that we engaged in to develop these materials. So conversations about a statewide Harvest of the Month campaign started back in 2011. And then in 2012 or 2017, excuse me, Foodwise picked up the project again and discovered that there was still a lot of interest in a statewide campaign. So in 2019, Foodwise hosted a graduate student who conducted a formative assessment, including a review of the literature and interviews with key stakeholders. And this information was used to write a comprehensive plan for a statewide campaign. The material development began in February of 2020 and really has been a collaborative process throughout. We started by developing a Harvest of the Month work group. And this was part of our statewide Harvest of the Month leadership team. And this work group was comprised of almost 40 members from schools, nonprofits, extension, state agencies, farmers, local public health departments, and many other organizations. I've recognized a lot of names. Our presenters were part of the work group, and I've recognized a lot of the names of those joining today who are part of the work group. Now, we also had a FoodWise Harvest of the Month committee. And those individuals not only supported the development of the materials, but they worked this past year with schools to pilot test and evaluate the first round of materials. And we also had an educator team that was part of FoodWise and comprised of our Spanish bilingual educators and Extensions Language Access Department. And they really made sure that the resources are both culturally relevant and linguistically inclusive for diverse Spanish language communities throughout Wisconsin. So what you'll notice about our Spanish language materials is that many times they're not a direct translation of the English version, especially those nutrition messages on the posters, but they were created from scratch to really resonate with diverse Spanish language communities throughout Wisconsin. And during the development of the materials, we also engaged in market research and message testing to gather feedback from audiences and make sure that our materials were hitting the mark. 
And then in late 2020, we were awarded a Wisconsin Specialty Crop Block Grant to expand our campaign. And this allowed us to develop resources for eight additional fruits and veggies. And this is what completes our full suite of materials. So those 20 different fruits and veggies that we're highlighting by the season, we're calling our full suite of harvest of the month materials. I would like to share with you previews of the materials that we have available for each featured fruit or veggie. So first we have posters in English and Spanish and our posters are available in three different sizes. There's 18 by 24, 17 by 11 and a smaller eight and a half by 11 that could be really easy to print out just on your local printer. There are also custom menu graphics for each fruit or veggie. These can be placed on a printed or electronic school menu to indicate a harvest of the month fruit or veggie will be served. For the classroom, there are activity guides for teachers, educators, or AmeriCorps members that include interesting facts, nutrition and seasonality, taste testing activities, they have an educational activity with suggestions for adapting to virtual learning, book lists, and planting and harvesting information that's specific for a school garden. We have a few different types of materials that can be used to reach parents and caregivers. So the first are Facebook graphics, and we have three Facebook graphics per fruit or veggie, and these are in English and Spanish. There's always one Facebook graphic that looks like the poster, one that features a recipe or quick and easy ways to integrate the fruit or veggie into family meals, and then one graphic with a family activity or suggestions for getting kids more involved in the kitchen. We also have a social media toolkit available for download, and this includes all of the graphics and suggested post text to accompany each graphic. And again, this is all in English and Spanish. Uh, for Facebook as well, we also have a general Harvest of the Month cover photo and a logo that's designed for a profile picture that you can download for your school Facebook page as well. In addition to the Facebook graphics, there's also newsletter graphics that include information about each fruit or vegetable. So these are designed as image files that can be easily inserted into printed or electronic school newsletters. So all of the information is there, it's ready to go. You just need to copy and paste. And the third piece of materials, especially for families, we have postcards. And these are intended to be printed and sent home to families. They include a quick recipe, a family activity, and our kids in the kitchen suggestions. This past year during COVID, a lot of schools used these printed materials to put in to the school lunches that were being sent home with students. And then we have a couple other supporting materials for Harvest of the Month. One of them is an outreach flyer. This is primarily for FoodWise and other partner organizations like AmeriCorps members, and it's really intended to be used with school staff and administrators to share more about what is Harvest of the Month, what are those benefits, how can it be used in a school-based setting. And then on the other hand, we also have a sample participation letter. This is intended for schools to be able to use and send home to families. This way you can share with families at the beginning of the school year that you're participating in Harvest of the Month and what some of the different activities or resources you might be sharing will look like. And this, this particular letter was created as a Word document. So it's really easily adaptable to your school. And it's also available in both English and Spanish. All of the materials that I just mentioned today, there's so many over over 100 that are available to download from our website. And you can see the link to our website here on this page. We will put that in the chat box at the end of our presentation today. And the entire website is also available in English and Spanish in case you wanna be able to share that out in your communities. 
Now, in order to access the materials, you will need to fill out a very short survey and then you'll be emailed automatically a password to access the page where you download the materials from. This information that's collected on the short survey is for federal and state grant reporting purposes. And additionally, at the end of the school year, we'll be sending out an evaluation to schools to collect more information about how you use the materials and some other questions specifically around implementation. And again, this is for our federal grant reporting and we so appreciate you taking the time to fill out that survey when it comes out at the end of the school year. That was my very, very quick overview of Harvest of the Month. And now I'm going to pass the presentation over to Maggie. Thank you, Emily. Just one moment while I share my screen here. All right. Now, can everybody see my screen, Emily? Am I good? Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maggie Byrne, and like Emily mentioned, I am a public health nutritionist on the DPI school nutrition team. And today I'm going to give you a very brief overview about crediting and menu planning these harvest of the month foods. Um, like I said, this is going to be a basic overview and we do have many, many resources and even more in depth trainings that go through these topics in more detail. And I'll point those out to you on our webpage a little later on and they'll also be sent out to you via email um, in the follow up email after this webinar. So first I just wanted to share why is DPI here presenting about a farm to school topic and I just thought it'd be a great place to let you all know that we do have three farm to school specialists on the school nutrition team at DPI, I, myself included, um, and we're here to help provide technical assistance to you all in, excuse me, in what in incorporating farm to school into your program. So whether that be helping you figure out how to credit those items, which we'll be talking about today, um, how to improve your school garden. We have many resources here on our webpage listed below, our farm to school webpage that can help you with nutrition information as well as finding connections to help enhance your farm to school program. We're also part of the farm to school network and we will apply for farm to school grants as they come available. So just a little background as to why the DPI school nutrition team is here talking with you all today. And then we're gonna jump right into crediting. So first we will talk about crediting vegetables. Um, luckily fruits and vegetables are the two easier items to credit in the child nutrition programs because they generally credit cup for cup. So as you can see here, and our example would be a half cup of corn would credit just as a half, half cup of starchy vegetables. Um, you can round down to the nearest eighth cup. So you could have an eighth cup of corn, a fourth, a half, three fourths. Um, and there are a few exceptions that we will talk about. So for example, leafy greens, when they're raw, they credit as half the volume served. This chart may look familiar to any of you in here that are involved in the menu planning, and that is the vegetable subgroups. So we know that in the child nutrition programs, schools must provide all five of these vegetable subgroups weekly. So the weekly minimum is a half cup for all of the subgroups, except for that red orange subgroup, which is a three fourths of a cup per week. The vegetable subgroups are categorized based on their nutritional content. So although some of them are colored like dark green and red orange, the color isn't always exactly how they will credit in their subgroup. And this is by no means an exhaustive, exhaustive list, but it is pretty thorough. I will show you a little bit later on where you can find this list on our website. We also have a handout on our webpage titled Half Cup Crediting of Fruits and Vegetables. And this handout was created since under Offer Versus Serve, each student must select a minimum of a half cup of fruit, vegetable, or combination of the two in order to create a reimbursable meal. 
So as you can see here, many, many of the harvest of the month items are on this list, which is why I included it today. Um, by no means do you need to look at this and memorize it. It's on our webpage and I'll also show you where you can find this, but it shows you if you have an item that you use frequently, and we know that these are common in child nutrition programs, it will tell you the size of that item and what the serving size required is for crediting as a half a cup, as well as the vegetable subgroup. So like I said, I will show you where this is on our menu planning webpage a little bit later on. And then we will talk about crediting fruits because there are a couple of fruits in the harvest of the month materials. So fruit is also measured in cups and it also credits cup for cup most of the time. Um, as you can see below, there is an exception with dried fruit. So for example here, the example is raisins. If you had a half a cup of raisins, it would actually credit as half cup of fruit because that nutrition is condensed down into that dried fruit. And here you can see we also have a half cup crediting information for lots of common fruits. And here you can see there are just two that are part of the harvest of the month materials, um, but it is important to note that and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. And then we can't talk about crediting without talking about the USDA food buying guide for child nutrition programs. So the USDA Food Buying Guide is another great resource to help you with crediting fruits and vegetables. And the Food Buying Guide can help you with all of these items here listed on the slide to order the correct amount of food, meet the meal pattern, control food costs, limit food waste, and make the right amount of food. So this next slide kind of gives you a little bit more detail about why that is. So, when we're talking about fruits and vegetables here with harvest of the month, you can see that it gives you all of this great information about fruits and vegetables. You can find out the food as it's purchased, but as well as the edible portion, which is the servings per purchase unit, that third line. And then the, you'll also see the typical purchase unit, the serving size per meal contribution, the purchase unit for 100 servings of that food. And then there's often additional information about each fruit or vegetable. So here's just one example, apples, which are one of our harvest of the month foods. Um, but you will be able to find this information about all the different fruits and vegetables for harvest of the month if you go into the food buying guide. And speaking of, the, of getting into the food buying guide, there's a few different ways you can utilize this resource. So you can go online and just type in the food buying guide. You do, they do ask that you make an account generally and then all your information is saved. It's a free service um, or you can log in as a guest. The food buying guide also has a mobile app and an option for printing the food buying guide, which it's quite lengthy, but you can get to it by all of those methods. And then within the food buying guide, there's something called the recipe analysis workbook, or sometimes you'll maybe see it referred to as RAW, R-A-W. And this is a tool used to determine the expected meal pattern contribution and crediting for a recipe. So say you wanna utilize one of the harvest of the month foods in a recipe, you can use the recipe analysis workbook within the food buying guide to find out how much that food will credit in your recipe. So it's, as you can see under tools, this is the homepage of the food buying guide. You would go to tools and then find the raw right under there, or you can see the highlighted version or the highlighted tab over on the lower left-hand slide up there. Um, and this tool is a little bit complicated, but they do have a great instructional um, page right at the beginning of that tool. So it's really great if you're doing more scratch cooking, which is always encouraged when possible. Now, I know that the food buying guide and recipe analysis workbook, that was a super general overview, but we do have a course that talks about this on our webpage. So that information will be linked in the follow-up email if you'd like some more information about those tools. 
And then we're gonna jump right in and talk about how the harvest of the month fruits and vegetables credit so that you're aware of what we're talking about here today, the actual food items. So as you can see here, starting with autumn, we've got apples, which generally they would credit cup for cup if you're slicing them, but we know that a lot of schools will provide a whole apple. And as you can see here, this is a screenshot from that half cup crediting page that I showed you earlier. No matter, generally, no matter what size apples you are providing, they will credit at least a half cup, which is good news since we know that half cup is kind of a magic number with offer versus serve and making sure that st students have a reimbursable meal. And then we also have winter squash, which is in the red-orange subgroup, and that credits cup for cup. Broccoli is part of the dark green vegetable subgroup and also credits cup for cup. Cranberries generally are served dried in the school in child nutrition programs, in which case they would credit for double their volume. So like I said earlier, they would do a fourth cup would actually be considered a half cup. And then if you do plan to put cranberries in a recipe or cook them into something, that's when it'd be a really great place to use the recipe analysis tool to find out how it would credit in your recipe. Kale, one raw credits for half the volume. So you would need one whole cup to get a half cup of kale crediting in the child nutrition programs, but cooked it would credit cup for cup. The winter vegetables, these are quite easy because they all credit cup for cup. Um, just one item here that I thought I would point out is that cabbage, no matter what color cabbage, is always in the other vegetable subgroup. So that can be tricky because there is a green and red cabbage, but it always credits in the other vegetable subgroup. And you can see the other vegetable subgroups for the other vegetables are all color coded here on this slide. Our spring vegetables have an, another couple tricky ones, and those are the greens and the lettuce. Um, but we have already talked about this previously. The raw version of greens credits for half the volume because it's that leafy, airy vegetable. But if it's cooked, it would credit cup for cup. And the same goes with lettuce, although I know we don't typically cook lettuce down. Um, but lettuce, another important thing to note is that iceberg lettuce is in the other category for vegetable subgroups, while romaine lettuce is a dark green vegetable. And that's because that romaine has some more nutrients in it and it's that darker color, even though we know color isn't always exactly how the vegetables categorize, but it's important to know that that iceberg is not a dark green vegetable. The other three vegetables, asparagus, radish, and sweet peas all credit cup for cup and you can see their vegetable subgroup next to each item. And then summer, summer squash, peppers, corn, and cucumber all credit cup for cup. The important thing to note about peppers is that red and orange bell peppers credit in the red orange category while green and yellow are in the other vegetable subgroup. And then tomatoes do have a few rules of their own. When they're raw, they do credit cup for cup, but tomato paste and tomato puree have some special numbers here that we do have listed on our vegetable subgroup handout, which I will point out later. And that's that tomato paste, one tablespoon is a fourth cup and for puree, two tablespoons credits as a fourth cup. So just some different rules there. And then talking about menu planning, we are gonna look at our webpage to see some of the resources we have for you all. So are we still seeing my screen and the menu planning webpage? Emily or? Looks good. Okay, great, thank you. Yes. So when talking about menu planning, that's a very, there's a lot that goes into menu planning as those of you on the call who menu plan may know. Um, so I thought I would just pull up our menu planning webpage and show you where our menu planning tools are. So you're on the, if you look on the left-hand side of our school nutrition 
web page, we are currently under program requirements. And then we have a menu planning web page. So under this menu planning tools is where you can find all of the wonderful information that we have about menu planning, including the lunch and breakfast meal pattern tables that tell you what the meal pattern is for various grade groups. And then these are our menu planning worksheets below. So there are instructions and examples of completed menu planning worksheets that can show you how, how to menu plan. So I'm gonna just pull up one really quickly to show you what it looks like. So here is a menu planning worksheet. And this is where you'll see we have the vegetable subgroups below. So since we talked a lot about subgroups today, this is where you would fill in those different harvest of the month vegetables in particular and find out if you are meeting that weekly requirement. So here it's got the minimum right there for each vegetable subgroup. And then up here is where the fruits would go. So menu planning is a complicated process. I'm sure that everyone on the call who does this knows that sometimes you just have to work through these menus to get those vegetable subgroups. But the good thing about the harvest of the month materials is that you've got a lot of vegetable subgroups to choose from. So you can plug in a lot here and make them work for your school. The last thing that I wanted to show you about this menu planning is our cycle menus, which also is on the same web page. So under menu planning, cycle menus, and you can also find it up here. So I will click on that. And here we have a brand new resource called the Let's Cook Wisconsin School Meals Rock Cycle Menu. So this is a five week cycle menu that I do have pulled up right here that has recipes that have a lot of these harvest of the month materials in them already. So if you are trying to find some new cycle menus for your school, this is a great resource for you. We've got all of these. This is the cycle menu for five weeks and everything in bold has a recipe to it. So as you can see here, we've got mashed potatoes, salsa, corn, so many harvest of the month materials, and that's just to name a few. Um, so the cycle menu webpage has a getting started resource. It has the all the recipes in 50 and 100 servings, as well as all the menu planning worksheets that you'll need to get started with this. So it has lots of those harvest of the month materials. Um, and it would be a great place to start if you want to incorporate some of these harvest of the month items. And that is all I have for you today. So I'm going to hand, hand the presentation back over, um, but just keep an eye out in that follow-up email for resources with all of this information in it. Hi, thank you everyone. I'm April Yancer. I'm with the Department of Agriculture. I am in the Division of Egg Development and I run the Farm to School and Institution and Wisconsin Foods Program. And I'm super happy to be on this panel today. Um, we are here to help you make those connections with your local producers so that you can participate in the Harvest Month um, menu cycles. Next. Thank you. Like I said, I'm in the Division of Agricultural Development and um, the pictures of the people you see on the screen right now, that's our team. And if you're a local producer selling into local markets, um, you may already be familiar with some of these spaces or you may want to be. We offer services of all kinds for local food development and including the Farm to School and Institution Program. Um, the Something Special from Wisconsin is a marketing program um, that Lois Fetterman um, is in charge of. We also have a meat and dairy specialist, um, a grant specialist to help connect with, with funding, and um, a specialist who helps with grazing and organic system supports, as well as socially disadvantaged farmers and offering technical additional technical assistance in those areas. 
Um, so this is our team and we have a lot of local organic, or I'm sorry, local um, food system supports and are able to help connect you to farm to institution markets and producers. Um, the Farm to School and Institution Program started in 2009 with the Wisconsin Act of 2003. Um, and with that came the Wisconsin Farm to School Advisory Council. And that council was put in place to um, help advise DATCAP on how to support the Farm to School Network. Um, this group is, is a vital resource. Um, for the network and it's made up of, of experts in various fields between um, child health, agricultural development, economic development, um, early care, and, and um, members of the DPI team. And together we come together and look at what the needs are to support farm to school efforts throughout the state. Next. Thank you. Within the Farm to school program, there are a couple of different areas where we offer specific technical assistance um, and opportunities to connect between producers, the supply chain, and school food buyers. One of our main collaborations that we do with DPI is called the Marketplace Meetings, and they are a collaborative effort. Um, we meet twice a month, and it's really open hours for anybody who is a local food producer or supplier that works with schools um, and institutions to, um, to provide for school meal programs. Um, it's a great opportunity to meet people, connect, find product. And I see a lot of people from our marketplace meetings um, in this meeting today, so, so welcome. Additionally, we offer assistance in um, assessing needs and opportunities for farm to school markets, um, connecting members of local food supply chains to each other to help advance their businesses. Um, we support farm to institution um, supply chain projects such as um, the tribal elder box food program and, and others throughout the state that are, are just working on those pieces that are connecting the producer to a distributor to a buyer. Um, and we also act as a resource for other agencies and organizations who are looking to support local food production. Next. Thank you. Um, two years ago, DATCAP received, um, a, was awarded a specialty crop block grant. And with that grant, we have worked to worked with Midwest Foods and have put together a pilot where um, we are producing a farm to school minimally processed fruit and vegetable line um, and offering it um, to school food service directors. And this, this grant had changed several times and with the onset of COVID, there were a lot of needs that were shifting for school food service directors. And um, we felt like this was a solution that got a lot of traction. And we are happy that we have been able to align this project with the Wisconsin Harvest of the Month um, campaign. Thank you. Um, the Wisconsin Farm to School Minimally Processed um, Fruits and Vegetables pilot is being executed through Midwest Foods. Um, Alex is their local and sustainable coordinator and she's been partnering with us to find um, which products work best and in what form schools need them. If you are a producer and you're interested in supplying for this pilot and um, this future farm to school line, you can contact her and her information is here. Um, the Something Special from Wisconsin um, program is a trademark marketing program. Um, any business can, can join no matter how big or small. Um, and there are some specifications to, to being a Something Special member, and they're not all listed here, but the gist of it is that 50% or more of the product and services um, are attributed to Wisconsin ingredients, um, production or processing activities. Lois, um, she is our resource for the Something Special from Wisconsin um, program and has recently added a farm to school and institution um, 
component to something special from Wisconsin. So if you're a buyer and you're looking for product for your schools, you can go to this website, which is on the on the bottom here, and you can click on Farm to School and Institution and suppliers who have self-identified as supplying to, to those types of kitchens will be listed there and they'll be ready to, to work with you if you contact them. Thank you. Now this slide is from DPI. Um, Maggie provided this, but I included it here because it's another resource for suppliers and school buyers to connect. Um, this is um, through the DPI AmeriCorps program, and they've done a great job putting together this local food database. If you're a producer, you can go to the database and um, include yourself and your product and, and a variety of information about how to do business with you. If you're a school food buyer, you can also list your school as somebody who's looking to buy local produce. And um, from my experience with producers, this has just been an incredibly helpful resource. So I, I strongly encourage people to, to check this out if you're looking to connect around Harvest of the Month products. Thank you, that is the end. And I'm happy to take any questions after Sarah's been. Great, thank you, April. And I will get my slides up. So, okay, so thank you. Yeah, so I am Sarah Smith and I am the uh, policy systems and environment specialist for FoodWise. So I work with Emily and focus on how our extension staff support our partners in creating healthy environments through making changes to policies, the physical environment, and the systems that influence our health. So today I am going to share with you some of the ways that Extension can support you in implementing and strengthening your Harvest of the Month campaign. So the University of Medicine Division of Extension can directly support your Harvest of the Month campaign in several ways. First, we can provide nutrition education in your school to educate students about healthy eating. Second, we can help support a healthy school meal environment by working directly with you on identifying and making changes to your school meal service that encourage students to make and eat health those healthy choices. And finally, we can provide technical assistance in implementing Harvest of the Month. So I'll go over how we support these three efforts on the next slides. So extension educators from either our FoodWise or Healthy Eating Acting Living program can work in many schools across the state to provide nutrition education to students in these schools. FoodWise is funded through USDA, SNAP-Ed, or FNEP funding and works in schools where at least 50% of students qualify for free or reduced price meals. Nutrition education can be a great way to complement your Harvest of the Month effort to educate students about the benefits of eating Wisconsin fresh fruits and veggies, as well as encouraging them to actually eat those fruits and veggies. We use curriculum materials that are aligned to DPI nutrition standards to ensure that we are reinforcing, reinforcing nutrition messages introduced through the school's curriculum. And where possible, we encourage hands-on learning and through our in-person nutrition lessons where our educators visit school classrooms to provide direct instruction. At this time, we also offer virtual lessons for those schools that are operating in either a virtual or hybrid model, as well as schools that are not quite ready to bring outside visitors back into the classroom. Harvest of the Month can also be complemented by making other improvements to the school food environment. We can work with you to assess the food environment using research-based assessment tools from the CDC, Alliance for a Healthier Generation, or Action for Healthy Kids based on your individual school or district needs. We then use either these assessments to support you in identifying possible changes that will increase access to healthy foods and increase how much of that food is eaten by your students. Once you identify the changes you would like to make, we work with you to make a plan for making and sustaining those changes. We then help you put them into action through further training, resource development, or connections to other partnerships. And finally, we work with you to evaluate how the changes are working and make any changes to be more su successful. So this type of support is really tailored to your needs, goals, and resources, and we're happy to support you wherever you are currently at. And then finally, if you're looking for help in implementing your Harvest of the Month efforts extension can help. So we can work with you to 
plan for how you would select and implement the resources, provide training on how to use and implement those resources, connect you to other partners who can support your efforts and help you evaluate the success of your Harvest of the Month campaign. So to connect with us, you can find your local extension educator through the extension website. You can go to counties.extension.wis.edu. And from there, you can select the staff directory. And once you're at your staff directory, look for a FoodWise or a health and well-being educator. If there's not currently a county-based educator who can help you, please reach out to Emily and myself and we'll work to figure out an appropriate connection. So thank you and feel free to reach out with any questions. And yeah, I think we will switch that over to our question and answer session. Thank you so much, Sarah and April and Maggie. So much incredible information today. And yes, we have about, uh, let's see, just a little bit left than 15 minutes left in the hour. We'll save the last couple minutes to go over some final pieces, but we definitely wanna take questions. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, throw them in the chat box. You can unmute, you can turn on your videos. This is really informal. Let us know we have four amazing panelists and even more people from the audience who I bet could chime in and answer questions as well. And Sandy asks, who pays for the food samples? And Sandy, if you are asking specifically if for schools that are working with FoodWise or Extension, who would pay for those food samples? Likely if there's taste testing occurring in the cafeteria, that would be part of the school food service and would be paid for by the school. And then if there's food sampling that's occurring as part of FoodWise nutrition education lessons that are happening in the classroom, we can offer those as we frequently do as part of our um, nutrition classes. And hopefully that helps. Other questions? I know you have them. Otherwise, I'm going to take you on a tour of the Harvest of the Month webpage because I really liked Maggie's website tour. As you're thinking of your questions, I will show you the Harvest of the Month website. Feel free to throw them in the chat box. Oh, here's one. Is there a procurement process you have to go through to get products? I'm gonna shoot that either to April or Maggie. I would recommend going to the DPI website and Maggie, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a procurement section and it shows the different ways in which you can procure local product, the different methods that are used to procure local product. Yeah, that's that's where I was going to April. We do have um, a separate procurement team on our on the DPI team who would be happy to help you with any procurement related questions. Um, but our web place is a great place to start and that's where you could also find their contact information for specific procurement questions. Thank you, Christy, for a great question. I know procurement is always a question that we get a lot. And so it's nice to have those amazing resources available and people who do this for their job to be able to reach out to and ask, ask those very specific questions. Other questions from the group? Okay, well, here's your quick Harvest of the Month website tour while you're thinking of your questions. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So up here again at the top, you'll see the web link, but we'll go ahead and throw that in the chat box. But the Harvest of the Month will take you right to our landing page. Here at the top, you can see 
where you can toggle between English and Spanish. It gives just kind of the same overview information that I provided during the call today. But this is what I wanted to point out because it can be a little tricky, but in order to access the materials, you have to either click complete the survey, or if you already received that password, you can go in as many times as you want to download the materials. And then you just click log in now. So here is the complete the survey. And it's just name, email, job position, organization type, name, and just a consent that you're providing this information for grant reporting purposes. You fill it out, you will automatically get that email with the password and then be redirected to our materials download page. Hey, Emily. Yeah. A question did just come in about being mailed the materials. Is there going to be a way to order printed materials to be shipped directly to you? Amazing. Thank you so much for interrupting me with that question. And Unfortunately, not at this time. We had an amazing plan about how we were going to be able to offer printed materials for schools through um, what we call the learning store with an extension where you could just go on to an online platform, select the materials that you want, and then purchase them that way. Unfortunately, we that platform is no longer being supported in the same way, so we don't have with an extension the staff capacity to um, be handling shipping and storage of the printed materials. So at this time, there's not a good way to order printed materials directly from extension. What I can offer is that we have, if you want to print something in a professional way, so either working with a local printing company, we've heard that some schools like high schools are able to print the larger poster sizes, or some nonprofits, there's in the Manitowoc area, United Way was printing a lot of the materials for schools. What I can provide is the PDFs for print purposes. So these look just like the PDFs on our website, but they have crop marks and bleeds. So you can get that beautiful poster with the image right to the edges. So any of those PDFs that you want for printing purposes, please just reach out to me via email and be happy to share those. And hopefully we'll be able to find another way that people can order printed materials. But at this time, we just don't have the capacity. And that's a really great question. Before you keep going on your tour and maybe you'll hit this uh, fruit or veggie, um, Barbara just asked, what is the most unique farm to school vegetable served in schools to students that you may be aware of? Gosh. That's a great question. I think we could all probably chime in for that, but I don't even know like the most unique harvest of the month fruit or veggie. I'm not sure we tried to pick fruit or veggies that were pretty commonly available. And at the same time, tried to highlight different varieties within each category in case schools wanna try something new. So I haven't heard of any, anyone offering um, a Mexican sour gherkin before, but that's one that we recommend as like a different variety of cucumber. But I'm not sure in terms of what schools are actually offering. Maggie or April, do you have any unique farm to school fruits or veggies that you've seen? I was talking with someone a few weeks ago who was looking for jicama, which is exciting, fun one. Like that. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say that um, similar to what Emily said, it's, it's nice that a lot of these Harvest of the Month local items are somewhat recognizable because we know that sometimes it is hard to get students to try new things. But um, we did, I remember hearing from a school that had tried okra, which I didn't, hadn't heard that in a school before. So yeah, it's like she said, there are also some of those other varieties that maybe students hadn't even heard of, but it can make it more exciting to try a different type of some of these fruits and vegetables. I and, see that and, somebody also said eggplant. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Carrie shared that their districts have edamame on mm -hmm. the month of April. Uh, Christy shared that her students really like roasted winter squash. So very exciting. That. 
And then Rachel just chimed in and it's great to see a variety of uses for common veggies in the lunch menu, like carrot on a sandwich. I was excited to see banh mi sandwich on the school lunch calendar. Can, can't wait to look into more recipes that are offering to see other fruit and veggie use suggestions. Rachel, I am coming to that school because I think Vietnamese food is my favorite. That's, that's pretty awesome. And I was going to mention too, even something like radishes. We, when we were doing the research to see what kind of fruits and veggies to highlight in harvest of the month, we had farmers tell us that they were growing a lot more of the storage radishes. So the bigger ones that are available in the fall and looking for a way to market those to schools. So with the harvest of the month materials, not only do we highlight the more common, smaller red salad radishes, but we talk about storage radishes as well. So again, there's lots of different like varieties to think about within the harvest of the month fruit or veggie categories and something that maybe a farmer in your area has that, that they're interested in selling to your school. And Rachel may have seen that on me um, from the cycle menu that I pulled up. I think that that might be what you're talking about. So yes, that new cycle menu um, on our webpage that I share does have a lot of um, we tried to do some more unique items that maybe aren't quite as common. So the banh mi, there is a banh mi sandwich in our cycle menu. So that is exciting. And that will be, that link will be in the follow-up email. Amazing. So all schools can use it. I love it. Well, I'll just quick finish my website tour. Now we have amazing questions coming in. But I just wanted to point out that we have so some general resources that I covered in the presentation up top. And then you can go down to each fruit or veggie and see we have the English version and then the Spanish version of the exact same resource is right across. And so in the same row, the three different sizes of the posters, the postcard, there's those three Facebook graphics are here and then the newsletter insert. And then the social media toolkit is up here. So that's where you can find all the graphics and their post text. But if you wanna download the highest quality graphic, you can just click on that and download and everything is either an image file or a PDF. So hopefully pretty easy to find. We have about three minutes left. Any other final questions? Let me go ahead, I will share our contact information. I think a question just came as, as I was sharing my screen. Yes, so David just asked if we have any classroom materials for teaching students like exercises. We have classroom materials. We have those activity guides. They have learning activities, taste testing, lots of information about the fruit or veggie that can be shared with students, different reading. I think a couple of the activities are more active. I think there's a relay race in one of them, um, but they don't necessarily include physical activity in each activity guide, but that is what you'll be looking for. Those are really super helpful for teachers and AmeriCorps members and FoodWise educators as well for engaging students around each fruit or veggie. Great question, David. Okay, thank you all so much for joining. Please feel free to reach out to any of us if you have questions. I am going to go ahead and launch our final poll. And there we go. So I've launched a brief demographics poll and this is used to ensure that our programming is reaching a diversity of audiences and to fulfill our obligations as a recipient of federal funding. So you do reserve the option not to provide this demographic information and you can select prefer not to respond. We also have 
a very short evaluation of the webinar here today. It would be super helpful if you would take just three to five minutes of your time to go ahead and fill it out. And I am going to put that in the chat box. We will also be sending out a follow-up email to everyone who registered today. There you go. That will have links to all of the information that we talked about, lots of great resources. And as you've noticed, we've been recording the webinar as well. That will be available on the Harvest of the Month website. I think DATCAP will have it on their website. We'll send out an email when that's available. So you'll have this to refer back to or to share with others who might be interested in learning more about Harvest of the Month as well. So thank you again so much for joining us. It's been, it's been really fun to be able to share about Harvest of the Month with you today. So thank you so much.